Hi guys, in this uh, video we're gonna be talking about site layout. Um, basically what site layout is, um, it's gonna be a series of strings, uh, we're gonna use some string line here, to lay out the perimeter or the foundation of our project. Uh, for this particular project, we're gonna be framing a little tiny deck, uh, but the concepts that you learn in this video can be applied to any full build or any type of project that you're uh, gonna be laying out. Uh, so basically what we're gonna do is we're going to measure off of our house here and lay out where all of our posts for this uh, particular deck go. And then we'll be ready to start the project. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about with site layout is how we are gonna lay out our strings here. Um, the best thing to do um, that most guys will do is use what's called a batter board. And what this basically is, is it's a piece of wood that you could stake into the ground and you can attach your string to it. And the reason why you use a batter board instead of just like a stake is um, once this is in the ground, you now have what well, this is probably about 30 inches or so, you have a whole bunch of room here to maneuver your string. If you use just a stake or like a D-stake, concrete stake, um, you're restricted to just that post and you can't really adjust your string. So what a lot of people will do is they will lay out their foundation and they will basically make an X with their string, which we'll demonstrate here in a second. But that means that you have two batter boards running this string and then two batter boards running another string making an X. And you know that that X is a specific location of either your foundation or maybe a corner of a corner post. Um, so that's basically what we're gonna do here and we'll talk about the actual layout for this deck here in a second. Um, the second thing that I kind of want to touch on is uh, kind of this is the time that you want to take a little bit of extra time to think about the location of your project. Um, let's say you're going to be building a full, uh, full build home and you have to figure out where exactly on the property you're going to put it. Uh, is it going to be parallel to the road? Uh, which way is your door going to be facing, and uh, where are all the utilities on the property located so that your house is located in the right location. So you're going to want to find some base point to take all those measurements off of. A lot of times for a full build that could be the road, maybe it's a driveway coming into the property, but you want to find that point to take that base measurement off of. You don't want to just build a house out in the middle of nowhere without having that base location. The second thing you want to look at is the set of plans that you're referencing. Um, and you wanna really figure out what this string is gonna represent. If we were going to do like a concrete foundation, this string might represent the very edge of your form boards. Um, after you pour your concrete, then you would offset maybe four inches on your footer, and then you can set some new strings and that string might represent your foundation wall. After that's done, maybe you would set some new strings and that would represent your wall. Uh, you want to just reference those plans and come up with a game plan of what that string is going to represent. Um, in some cases, the string could represent the edge of something, like your form boards. Um, in other cases, too, you might set the height of this string uh, to reference your form board. Um, it all kind of just depends on what type of project you have. For our particular case here, we're not really going to worry about the height of the string so much as just making sure that our strings are laid out in a nice square fashion. Um, so we can go ahead and set our posts in a nice, nice straight line. Okay, so uh, now that we know kind of what we're gonna be laying out, uh, we're gonna be focusing on our posts for this layout. Uh, it's time to go ahead and start this layout for this project. Um, for this particular project, uh, our reference point, that base point that I was talking about is gonna be this wall of our home here. Uh, we just have a model home here, um, but our deck is gonna be coming off of this ledger board right here. Um, with decks or anything that's attached to a structure, uh, many times it's a good idea to go ahead and get that ledger board put in place before you actually do any site layout because this is exactly the point where it's gonna attach to the house and now you can just run your string line from that ledger board um, and there's no confusion or miscalculation because this is gonna be the exact ledger board that you use. Um, let's say if you were doing a full build and had nothing to reference off of, uh, the very first thing you would do with your project is that site layout and establish that base point off of either the driveway or the road or a specific utility. Um, but for this project here, we're gonna reference this, uh, this ledger board. So because we're in a garage uh, and I have a concrete floor, I can't really drive these stakes into the ground. 
Uh, so we have these little batter boards here on the ground, basically just made out of cinder blocks uh, that we're gonna use for this project. Um, we're only gonna set up four, uh, basically establish our four corners, and then we'll be able to get everything else um, that we need off of those four corners. Um, a little bit about these uh, batter boards. It's a good idea to have a batter board that's big enough. Um, this is just gonna be a little uh, eight by seven and a half foot deck. Um, but if you were doing a full build, you would really want something that had a little bit bigger width to it um, because that's just gonna be a little bit easier to dial in your string over a 40 foot or 60 foot run. We're just dealing with a little eight foot run here, so a little 16 inch board is gonna be plenty. But the first step that we're gonna do, um, our final deck uh, dimension here, where our rim joists are gonna be, it's gonna come out eight feet, or eight foot, one and a half inches, and it's gonna be seven foot, six inches wide. So what I like to do to just get our batter boards kind of right in the right location is just kind of set my tape out, and I'm just gonna lock it right on the ground here. Maybe. I'm gonna reference this eight foot mark. I know that I'm roughly gonna be at eight foot, one and a half inches, or that's gonna be my specific, but I just wanna get kinda in the rough location. And then what I can do is I can eyeball kind of parallel with this house. I don't have to worry about getting it accurate quite yet, but I'm just gonna put this batter board about in the location that it's gonna go. I can see my eight foot, one and a half inch mark and I'm about center with my batter board here. The next thing I kinda wanna touch on is, you can see that my deck, just kinda eyeballing it, my corner is gonna be about right here. And the reason why we put these uh, batter boards about four feet off minimally uh, is because we're gonna have our strings crossing here and our post hole is gonna be right in this corner. If we put these batter boards right on the corner or just maybe even had a stake right in this corner, um, we're not gonna be able to take our strings down, work, and then put our strings back up to reference where our posts are gonna go. We've just really screwed up our layout and we did all that work for nothing. So the great benefit of being able to put these batter boards up is you can keep them out of the way. They can stay there the whole project or at least until you're done with the phase of project that you're referencing them off of. And you can constantly take the strings up and uh, take the strings down uh, to be able to work. So. Got this one set here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and set this second one over here. Again, our uh, distance is gonna be eight foot one and a half. I'm gonna come off my corner about four feet or so and eyeball where my eight foot one and a half inches is. I'm not worrying about being too accurate here, I'm just eyeballing. That's why we have the batter board to dial in where it's supposed to go. So now that I know that this string is gonna be running about right here, I'm gonna eyeball about four feet off this way. I'm gonna look straight down on the rim joist or where my rim joist is gonna be going. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this uh, batter board right in the center. Again, not worrying about being too accurate yet. And then I'll go ahead and set my fourth and final one. Coming about four feet off of that line, eyeball and center, and setting that up. All right, so now that these are all set, you wanna just double check that these are in a location that they're not gonna screw up the rest of the project because we're not gonna want these to move until our posts are set. So these that are in a good, pretty good position here, uh, they're out of our way. Again, I can see my corner is gonna be about Right here and about right there, I have plenty of room to dig a post hole, get the dirt out of the way, and then I can put my lines back up. One last point that I kind of want to touch on with these batter boards is it's kind of important to try to get them about in the same plane. And what I mean by that is we're going to be running a string, and you want to get these somewhat level because as these strings come across and cross, you want them to be almost touching or pretty much touching. If you have this batter board set way up here and this batter board set way down here and your strings come across and they're about a foot apart, it's gonna be really hard to get an accurate measurement right where those strings cross. So take a little bit of extra time and if you are pounding your batter boards down um, into the ground with uh, stakes, 
make sure you get them about the same height. Okay, so we got our batter board set up. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is set our first string. Um, and all we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and attach it. Um, like I was saying about getting these strings all on the same uh, plane, our ledger board is up just a little bit. So I went ahead and put these scrap pieces of two by four right on the edge of our ledger board here. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow us to bring our string down uh, to the same level as where these, where these guys are at. Um, and it'll make our lines just a little bit more level. Um, it also helps out because now I know the inside of this uh, two by four here is gonna be exactly where our line needs to go and it's just gonna give us a little more surface area to nail to. Um, so what we can do is I already have a nail in here. Go ahead and tie a loop and put it on the back side here. And like I said, with it being able to run right on the inside, I put this nail on the back side. That way, as we pull this string tight here, it's gonna sit nice and flush to uh, the edge of this board. Uh, if I put a nail here, I could go ahead and tie a knot and put the loop on here but now that knot is gonna be a little bit thicker than this string and it's gonna push away from this uh, two by four here and it's just not gonna be as accurate. Uh, when you do site layout, um, a lot of people say, you know, like as long as it's within an eighth inch or a quarter inch, it's gonna be good. Uh, but this is where you just wanna take your time and get it exactly spot on because that eighth inch might uh, kind of grow or multiply as you go on up. Um, and if maybe your walls aren't perfectly level, if you get your walls within an eighth inch, now by the time you're up to your roof framing, everything's gonna be unsquare. So take your time here, get everything square, and the rest of your project will go much smoother. So I'll go ahead and bring the string out a little bit, come out to my batter board, and get a nail out here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna eyeball this. You can um, get it pretty darn close by just eyeballing, and then we'll get it um, right to where we wanna be uh, with the tape measures here in a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop a nail in. And then what you wanna focus on doing here is tie a knot just a little bit short of, or a loop I should say, short of the nail, because we want these string lines to be nice and tight. We don't want any slack in these string lines. So you can see that this string has no slack in it. If I tied a loop right out here, now our string is floppy and we're not gonna be able to get a very good measurement off of that. So tie it just a bit short, Go ahead and stretch it and put it on the nail. So this is now where we want to kind of focus on getting a little bit more accurate. Um, the first thing in site layout is having that reference point uh, for this deck. That reference point is gonna be our wall here. And we want everything to be nice and square off that wall. So my baseline is literally gonna be this ledger board. And because I want my string to be at the same height as our batter boards, we ran it down. And I have this string that uh, represents the back of this ledger board. Our wall sheeting, it's kinda hard to see, but our wall sheeting comes down over our uh, foundation here and sticks out that 7 16 of an inch. So if I measured off the wall, it wouldn't be quite accurate. Uh, so I just brought this string on across here and that's gonna represent the front of our sheeting and um, represent our wall here. So I can take all my measurements off of this baseline here that isn't gonna change during this whole project. The only other, or the only lines that should be changing are the lines that we're setting up here. This line should never move throughout the project. So kind of the, the way we're gonna go about this here, we have our baseline we're gonna go ahead and set one line that's 90 degrees to that baseline. Then we can set a parallel line from our baseline. And since we know that this line is parallel to that baseline, we should be able to set a second parallel. So baseline, 90 degrees, parallel, parallel. Um, and that's gonna be the stage of our project here. 
And the way we do that is a method, actually two methods. We're gonna be doing a three, four, five triangle, which basically creates a 90 degree triangle. If you have one leg that's three, one leg that's four, the hypotenuse is gonna be five. Uh, so we'll show you how to do that here in a second. Um, but then after we get the baseline 90 parallel and parallel set up, we'll be able to measure our diagonal measurements. Uh, geometry tells us that if our diagonals are exactly the same measurement, then we know that our uh, square or rectangle is exactly square, um, or at least 90 degrees in each corner. So that's what we're gonna do next. Um, I'm gonna get Azad out here in a second and get a couple tape measures and we'll lay out our three, four, five. All right, so I grabbed my tape measure here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and lay out our three, four, five. And again, basically what a three, four, five is, is meaning we're gonna have, or we're gonna try to make a right triangle. So one leg of our triangle is gonna be three, the other leg of our triangle is gonna be four and we're gonna connect that hypotenuse and it's gonna make five. Um, but to be a little bit more accurate, we're gonna do a multiple of a three, four, five. So we're gonna multiply everything by two and do a little bit of math. So now it's gonna be a six, eight, 10. Basically three times two is six, four times two is eight, and five times two is 10. So this is the, the corner here that we're gonna to wanna to make exactly a 90 degree triangle. So what we've already actually done here is right from this edge, we've come out. I've decided this leg is gonna be our uh, long leg. It doesn't really matter which one's which as long as our hypotenuse is always gonna be 10. Um, we were able to fit our eight foot on this one and our six foot on that one, so that's kind of how I decided. So i come out, and again, it's really important, I'm not touching the foundation with my tape. Um, those blocks, again, just extended that edge of that sheathing down. I'm technically measuring off the front of my sheathing right now and not touching that block. That's about a half, or seven sixteenths difference. So I'm off the front of our sheathing. I came out, measured eight foot, and I went ahead and took a Sharpie and made a mark here. And when I made that mark, I was really careful not to touch my tape measure to the string. And we want to be nice and accurate and make a nice precise mark. So I got my eight foot here. I did the same thing. I went off the inside of this block here, again, because this is gonna be the edge of our rim joist, came out, and I went ahead and marked six foot right here. So now to make this string exactly 90 degrees to this string, all we have to do is connect the two dots and make those dots 10 feet apart. So I have this tape measure here. I have a volunteer, Beth, coming in here. She's gonna hold the tape measure right on that uh, dot there. Azad can hold this tape measure here. And if we come and get a close up here, what we're trying to do is get an exact measurement of 10 foot and our mark to line exactly up. So as you can see, right now we're about 9 sixteenths of an inch off. So what I can do, and this is why our batter boards are so important, I can get an extra nail here, remove this string, and now Azad can guide me to which direction I have to go to make our two marks line up, our 10 foot mark and our, um, okay. our string mark. That's good right there. Right there. Good bet? Yeah. Nail it. All right, and we'll double check. Oh yeah, so good. Right there, perfect. So notice, as I had mentioned in the beginning, I just went ahead and changed this line. I did not touch that baseline that we uh, established. That baseline is always gonna stay the same and never move. Any adjustments that you're gonna do, there's gonna be any of these three lines that we set up. So now that we have our baseline and our 90 degrees set up, the next line is gonna be our parallel line and we'll go ahead and set that up next. Okay, so we got our uh, 90 degree line set up. So baseline, 90, parallel, and parallel. So we're gonna do that third parallel line now. Um, and that parallel line that we're gonna do is it's gonna be parallel off of that baseline that we started. So what I'm gonna do, um, it just so happens that our deck landed right on eight feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my eight foot mark that we have um, from our uh, six, eight, 10 layout and AJ is gonna go ahead and grab the other string, and Azad's just gonna get us close right now. He's gonna hook on, 
and get us close on that location. This isn't gonna be our final measurement because he's basically touching that string over there. So I'm gonna go ahead and set mine. I'm about at eight foot. And then he can guide AJ over to eight foot. All right, and he's gonna pop a nail. And then he'll go ahead and tie that knot short and stretch it out and hook it onto that nail. Perfect. So now we have two string lines set up. So the reason why we didn't go ahead and, oh, there's my tape measure. Uh, the reason why we didn't go ahead and just hook onto that tape or the string is just because we'd be pulling that string away from the wall. To get a much more accurate reading, uh, now we can have both these guys uh, running the tape. Um, AJ can be against the wall here, just holding that tape right up to that string, making sure it's not touching. And Azad can come to this side and make sure that tape's not touching this string. And then I can go ahead and adjust on the batter board. So they'll get their tape measures out here. And I can start moving these nails. So, because AJ moved his over there just a little bit, mine came off my mark. I'm gonna go ahead and get another nail and bring it right to eight feet. That look good? Yep. Still looking good? Yep. Oop. There we go. So uh, yeah, notice Zod's right on that 96 mark, that eight foot mark. He's hovering right above the string and not touching that string. So then we can go ahead and come over to the other side here. See how close we are. Again, AJ's not touching that string. We're pretty close. It looks like we're about an eighth, eighth inch over. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drive another nail really close here. Again, that eighth inch is gonna matter here. Move my string. Now how are we looking? Yep. Right on. Perfect. All right, so we just moved this string again. Uh, so we wanna double check our measurement over there one last time. Make sure it's right on eight foot. Right on eight foot. So now we got our 90 degree line and now we have our first parallel line. The last line that we have to set up here is our parallel line coming off of our 90 degree line, which we'll go ahead and do right now. So we'll grab our string line wherever it ended up, still over here. We can, Chop it off, tie another loop. Again, because we're going off of our ledger board here, we know that this is already right at seven foot three from this side. So I'll just go ahead and tie a loop. And then we'll run this string out, hold a tape from our 90 degree line here. These guys can go ahead and run that tape. I'm gonna go ahead and tie a loop here. And because we know that both of those lines that we just set are in the exact right location, we should only have to take this one measurement and we're gonna be pretty darn close. So, Azad will guide me in. I'm looking for seven foot three. We're gonna burn an inch here. Yep, and we're gonna do what's called burning an inch. Um, because we could actually hook onto the back of our uh, uh, sacrificial board that we put on the edge of our ledger board, uh, that's gonna be a really accurate uh, measurement. But because we can't really hook onto our string, uh, it's gonna be a lot more accurate holding at 
one inch uh, because you can hover over that inch. Uh, you can't really hover right on the edge of a tape measure because maybe it's bent a little bit or the end of the tape measure moves a little bit. So we're gonna do what's called burning an inch. And AJ is gonna hold right at one inch. Some guys will burn a foot. It doesn't really matter what you burn. You just have to do that math and make sure you're at that same amount that you took off um, at your measurement. So you're burning an inch, AJ? Yeah. So our final dimension is supposed to be seven foot three. He burned that inch, so now we're gonna look for seven foot four. I'm gonna bring my mark out to seven foot four. Zod's just touching the line, or just hovering the line there. Look good right there? Yep. And I'll set my nail. All right. So we wanna check that just one last time here. Inch. Burning that inch. Good. Right on seven foot four. All right, so we got our baseline set. That's never changed. We got our 90 degree line. We got our parallel line, and we set that second parallel line off of our first 90 degree line. Theoretically, uh, we should be nice and square right here, uh, but we can do one last check to make sure that we are spot on. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do um, our diagonal measurements. Again, uh, geometry says that if both of our diagonal me measurements are exactly the same, that means all four corners are exactly 90 degrees. Um, 90 degree angles. So what we can do is hold on one corner and it's real important, especially measuring from the corner. Uh, Azad's going to pick one edge of the tape. Looks like he's picking this edge and I'm also going to read off of that same edge of the tape. I'm going to pull and get all that slack out looking and I'm right at 129 and a half. So now if he comes to this, di or this diagonal here, and I measure out to this one, coming off this side. So he switched sides on me. And I'm at 129 and 7 sixteenths, which is pretty darn close. I will take a sixteenth of an inch. Um, if you were happen to be like a quarter or a half inch off, basically what you would do is whatever diagonal is wider, you would bring those two uh, measure or those two uh, batter board nails closer together. So let's say this uh, angle here was a half inch longer than this angle. All you would have to do is bring this nail just a hair that way, this nail just a hair that way, and bring this measurement in a little bit closer, and you'll begin to be a lot more square. Um, the second you have both of those diagonal measurements exactly the same, you know your layout's perfectly square. All right, so that's gonna complete our site layout for this particular project. Um, again, this project was really, really simple. We're literally just marking our four corners, uh, but if we had a little bit more complex of a project, um, let's say this was gonna be a house layout, this was a much larger layout, and we had intermediate posts coming through here. All we'd have to do is still start with that same baseline, that same 90 degree line and parallel lines off of that. And then we know we have a perfectly square layout. We can take a parallel line off of any of our first initial four lines because we know it's exactly square. So let's just say uh, we have two rows of uh, girder beam posts coming through here. We could go ahead and set two more uh, batter boards. We could attach that string and we could reference our baseline here and make it parallel. Um, that way we know the edge or the corner of those posts would run along that line. Same thing with this row. We could add two more batter boards, reference off our initial baseline, and get another parallel line. Um, this uh, deck is gonna have a set of stairs. Uh, I don't, I'm not gonna lay out the post for that stairs yet, um, but we have our initial deck here, and we could have a set of stairs coming up here. I could set those other two batter boards um, right now. I'm gonna wait until um, we actually get our deck built so they're not in our way. Um, but then I could lay out where those posts go there by just setting up four more batter boards, laying out the four corners of that stairs. Um, so you really just have to reference your plans. Um, I know most projects might have upwards of 16 to 20 batter boards before the layout's uh, even complete. So the biggest thing with that is you just wanna make sure that your batter boards are out of the way 
Um, even if it's 10, 15 feet uh, past where the project's actually gonna be, you just wanna make sure that those aren't gonna be bumped, they're not gonna be stepped on. Um, that way your measurements are gonna be accurate every time when you reattach the strings. Um, but yeah, just reference your plans and get that game plan before you actually start laying out and make sure you are within that 16th to spot on and your project will be perfectly square.